Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and a review of the ASUS ROG Maximus Z890 Hero. So this is one of their motherboards that is accompanying the new Intel 200 series on desktop. So this is LGA1851 and it is DDR5 only. So today is the launch of these new CPUs from Intel. We're going to be taking a look at that desktop platform, seeing how it compares to some of the older Intel CPUs like the LGA 1700 with the i7 12700K, for example. And we're gonna go a little bit further back with the 11700K as well in some of these tests. This is LGA 1200 because I do feel like if somebody is interested in upgrading to the new Ultra Series, you need to be on either 12th gen or older for it to be a worthwhile upgrade. Otherwise, if you're on, you know, say 13th or 14th gen, you're really not gonna get much of a benefit outside of the efficiency improvements. And in some cases, there may be some regressions. But anyway, this video is gonna be about the motherboard itself from Asus. So this is the Maximus Z890 Hero. So very similar to a motherboard that I covered previously, which was the ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. So this is the AMD version of the exact same motherboard. So there are, they are almost identical from a design standpoint and a functional standpoint. They both feature Asus's new Nitro Path. So DDR5 overclocking should be a little bit better on these compared to previous generation. So inside the box, you know, just like with the Crosshair version, we have the Q release for the M.2 that supports Gen 5 SSDs now without taking lanes from the graphics card. So you at least are guaranteed one Gen 5 SSD without sharing GPU lanes. For any additional one, it would be sharing lanes. So it does have the GPU Q release feature that they are featuring now on their ROG motherboards, both X870E as well as Z890. So in the box, there are some ROG stickers and an ASUS web storage page. So you get some ROG stickers like this. As well as a Maximus Hero quick start guide. So it kind of shows all the different things on here on the board and some stuff like that on how to set it up. Could be useful for people who are not that familiar with building a PC, although I don't think this would be a good starter motherboard. It's very expensive. So there's a, for those who dare card in there. In the box, you get four SATA cables. So it looks like they've got two right angled and two straight through or straight angled ones, which I think is very good for two and a half inch drives to use the straight cable. And there's some kind of bracket here. I'm not actually sure what this is for. This is for a fan guard. That's new. I don't know what exactly that's used for. And then there are, looks like one, no, one, one, two, three, So it looks like there are a total of six of these extra little spacer pads for M.2 drives. This would go on the motherboard, I guess, if you're not using the thermal pad on the motherboard side. There is a Q connector for the front panel I.O. Looks like a RGB to three pin cable. I'm not exactly sure what that is. There's a lot of weird stuff in here that I probably will never end up using, to be honest. Uh, this is for, this is extra spacers for M.2 drives. There's two of them in there. Oh, there's, there's two of them. And then there's a extra, some extra screws with the push clip for the toolless SSD installation. A Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 antenna. This motherboard supports a 320 megahertz Wi-Fi 7. There's a thermal pad for a 2210, so that's interesting. A bottle opener, 
and a little USB thumb drive with the drivers. It's USB 3.0. So that is in there as well. Okay, there's an extra one of those things too. And that's basically everything that's in the box. Moving on to the back of the board. So the board does feature a very nice full back plate. Okay, for the M.2, this one is a little bit complicated. It is toolless, but there is a latch that you have to move outward, and then it comes up like that. So just a pretty standard block of metal. I don't know how effective this will be at cooling an actual Gen 5, because I feel like the finned designs are actually better than just a chunk of metal like this, but we'll see. And then there is a thermal pad on the motherboard side as well. To access the additional M.2s, it requires undoing four of these screws that hold it down. So this plate comes off, revealing five M.2 drives. So one, two, three, four, five. Now the thing to keep in mind is if you're somebody who does not want to share the GPU lanes, then there are two of these that you cannot use or you don't want to use to avoid lane sharing because this board does feature the GPU lane sharing for additional Gen 5 SSDs. I believe the two that are shared are either these two or these two or maybe these two. Some combination of two of these are sharing lanes where the third one would be a Gen 4 drive that goes directly to the CPU. And then these two over here are Gen 4 that run off of the chipset. So the nice thing about it is you can drive a total of six M.2 drives directly off the board. However, just note there is lane sharing. So you have to subtract two of them if you want to come up with the total in terms of maintaining the 16 lanes of the GPU. So that'll be a total of four M.2s this one, one of these, and both of those. So for a total of four M.2s, allowing you to maintain 16 lanes to the GPU. This X4 slot down here, as far as I know, is not shared with anything. So that is an additional extra four lanes off the chipset for any sort of add-in, like a capture card, for example, or a 10 gig LAN or whatever. So that is basically it for the Crosshair Hero. So if you like this sort of content, and you're curious to see my opinion and my experience using the new Intel Core Ultra processors, do get subscribed to the channel and hit that bell icon to get notified when I do these live streams and when I upload these new videos. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.